Hello boys and girls. We're going to take a look at last year's FRQs. Uh, we're going to go through and do this as a five minute per FRQ look. So it's going to be a little more than 15 minutes with all the kind of chit chat and going back and forth. And I'm going to do this while also having a copy of the one pager up here just for some reference and going back and forth. So I'm not going to be blasting through this at light speed and getting the whole problem done in five minutes per FRQ. Ain't happening. Uh, but what I am going to try to do is in 15 minutes get a solid base with some explanation of what's going on for the FRQs that existed. Uh, for a little bit more preface there, however, this FRQ set was uh, the one that my students came back from last year and said, Mr. Zook, it was a million pages long and it just kept going and going and going and going and going. We're still on problem one and going and okay, there's problem number two. So this is a, a difficult one, all right? But uh, we're here because we wanna see what we can get out of a problem in five minutes without necessarily trying to finish the whole thing. What we have 10 minutes left per problem afterwards, I can put that together into a second video. Uh, but anyways, uh, let's go ahead and get started here. I'll start the timer and we'll read the problem and do some setup. So the first problem says, got a picture. I'm um, looking at it, there's a spring, there's a block, there's a hill. My first thought is conservation of energy. That's the first thing that pops into my head. Uh, it says a block sitting on a horizontal surface pushing against a spring. The spring is attached to a wall. And it says it's held against the spring. It's not attached to it, so that means it's free to move off. Um, the block is then released from rest. Okay, so zero velocity, I got that. Uh, the block slides along the horizontal surface up the ramp to maximum height h. So yeah, this is sounding like a conservation of energy problem. Uh, frictional forces are negligible. Sweet, so no friction. I'm gonna say mu equals zero for those. Um, there's no question here. Cool, let's go on here. Um, a student, yeah, this is a lot of text, this is a lot. A uh, student compares h max p for spring p, which is the maximum, with the maximum height h max q received with a different spring. So two different springs, two different max heights up the ramp. Um, for each spring, force of magnitude f on the block that varies with the function of distance x. The spring is compressed, so it's an ideal spring for p. I feel like I'm having to rush here and I've already done this problem before. Um, and then it's, uh, it's got the k value, and then for the other, other spring, the equation is cx to the 1 half. So um, I'm seeing that here. This looks like a 1 half power equation, and then that's linear, so that makes sense. Or sees that thing right there. Again, no question so far, and I've spent probably a minute and a half just reading. Um, for the experiment, the block is pushed against one spring. This is a lot of text. Um, compressing the spring a distance there. Uh, the block is then released at rest. In trial one spring, P is used. In trial two spring, Q is used. Okay, for each, uh, they want us to draw a free body diagram when it's um, when it's that far, um, right there. So um, first off, they're both going to have the same weight forces. So I can say mg because it's the same thing. Uh, they're going to have the same normal force, which should be equal to the weight force because they are it's the same weight. Um, but here's where it's a little tricky. Uh, if they're both being pulled back that 0.01 meters, they want you to draw the forces to scale for the spring force. So for p, that would be um, 100 times 0 0.01. That's 100 times 100 would be 1. Um, and the other one is 20 times 0 0.01 to the 1 half, um, which would be 0 0.1, which would be 2. So this is 2 newtons. So I would draw this bigger than this. Spring force is bigger. Now, um, take a lot of time on that, but um, I could also see that just from the graph. At 0 0.01, the force is larger. So. Um, that would take care of that. Um, BI, what feature of the graph in figure two could be used to estimate the work done? Work done is the area underneath the graph. We got that right here in our one pager. So I'm not gonna do any sort of calculations. I'm gonna say that work is area under graph. That could probably be worded better, but that's all the time I wanna spend on it. Um, there's one compression distance x zero where the height h max reached 
it's the same for both of them. Predict whether that x sub zero would be 0.04. Um, well, here we're dealing with conservation of energy, so the work is going to eventually become the gravitational potential energy, the work done by the spring. So if they go to the same height, that means they have the same potential. So I would have to look at the graph and say at 0.04, well, the work done by Q is bigger. So I'm going to say that um, it's got to be that position has to be greater than 0 0.04 for the areas to match up. I, no more analysis than that. Um, B3 on the graph provided for. Um, so they want us to graph the maximum height as a function of position pulled back. All right, well, not going to do that right now, but for P, it would be 1 half kx squared turns into mgh. And for, because I know that's an ideal spring, but for q, we'd have to do the integral of cx to the 1 half and then say that's equal to mgh. So we'd have to come back and do that. And my goodness, look at that, 15 seconds left on the five minutes, um, and we're just to part C. So um, I'm going to go ahead and call it. We're going to take an extra minute on this just to kind of look at some of the setup. But um, as as you can see, um, yeah, not 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 an easy problem to get done in, in five. Let's let that timer run out. It's not uh, letting me. OK, well, whatever. Um, so let's go ahead and take a look at just what the setup could be for these other problems. Um, part C, it says spring Q is attached to the wall is at equilibrium. As shown, block A is a mass of 0.12 kilograms and block B is a mass of 0.07. Um, 7, it's held at rest at the top of the ramp and a horizontal surface. Student releases block A and it moves down the ramp and collides with block B. The change in vertical height block A is 0.75, so conservation of energy in order to figure out what's going on there. So this going downhill is going to be COE. Um, and then it's going to hit block B, so that's going to be a collision. I assume so. Let's see. Um, calculate the velocity of the two block system immediately after the collision between the blocks. So um, in order to get this one, I'd have to do the, for block A, I'd have to say M times G times H initial turns into 1 half mv squared for the final velocity that it has. Um, and then for the collision, I would say that that velocity, I'll say ma times that vf plus 0, because block b is at rest, is going to be equal to, uh, by the way, I'm sorry, it says it's six. they stick together right there. I'd have MA plus MB times some new V final final. I don't know how to, to describe that. Um, so I would calculate that, and that's how I'd get the maximum uh, velocity after the collision. And then they want to know the maximum compression of the spring. Well, here I would have to say that the K for A and B together is going to turn into the spring energy for Q. And that spring energy for Q, I've got to use that integral of Cx to the 1 half dx um, that we got up above. So we'd have to pull that equation down in order to finish that problem off. But again, conservation of energy, setting it up, saying the kinetic energy the two blocks have together will compress the spring. Um, then part D. Is that, is that it? They're, yeah, that's it. Okay, geez. Um, spent almost 10 minutes just reading this problem. Um, spring Q, where that is replaced with a different nonlinear spring, because why not? Um, and the procedure described in Part C is repeated for spring uh, R. The uh, equation is that the maximum compression of spring R is greater than the maximum compression of uh, this one. Which of the following compares between C and D? Well, if it compresses more, uh, that would seem to be that it's a weaker spring. Which I would say means D is going to have to be less than C. So you get less force for, um, I'm sorry, yeah, D is less than C or C is greater than D. I, that's about as much description as we can get there. Um, okay, well that was a lot. 
Uh, I think I'm going to go ahead and pause this and uh, call this the setup video for problem number one, and then we'll do problem number two and three on separate videos. All right, see you then.